What's up everybody? Welcome to Have Around Motorsports. My name is Steve Fast. I hope you guys are having a spectacular day. Behind me we do have the 2019 Ram on the lift. So today we're actually going to be lifting this truck up in the air, giving you guys a little bit of a look of what the 19 Ram looks like underneath, maybe some of the features that have changed from previous models and all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to be giving you an up close and personal view of the bottom of this truck. Also, we do have a couple of things. We have the amp steps here. I kind of halfway unboxed these. I'm actually waiting for my rib nut tool because I believe there are a couple of rib nuts that need to go into the truck for this system. So I'm waiting for that tool to show up before I tackle that install, but we will have that on the channel as well. And over here, we've moved everything around just because of having to have everything in the construction phase, get things out of people's way. We do have our rolling lock tonneau cover. Now I might be trying to tackle that today, but we'll see how things go. So first things first, I noticed we do have our little air dam actuator right here. There's this rod that goes across the top here and then this little flap here at the bottom actually lowers at certain speeds just for aerodynamics and all that kind of good stuff. Also, you notice here on this cross member, they've got a little bit of a Swiss cheese action going on here, allow the air to flow through that. So they're really trying to make these trucks a lot more aerodynamic, try to save on fuel, and that's always a good thing. So over here, you can see we do have a rather heavy duty lower control arm. This is all aluminum by the looks of things. And we have a fairly heavy duty knuckle as well. And you can see the size of that tie rod. It is very substantial. Also, I noticed at the top here, we do have looks almost like a composite upper control arm and then it's metal on the top. So almost like a composite insert inside a metal upper A arm. But we do have our regular coil over and your standard independent front suspension. And over here we do have our front differential. And as you can see on this truck, I mean, everything is really accessible. We don't really have a lot of stuff that looks like it's hard to repair. I mean, if you had to get this front diff out, it doesn't look terrible at all. Also, we do have electric power steering. This is our electric power steering rack right here so we don't end up having to have a power steering pump anymore which is really nice because i did have an issue with that on my 2010 and as you can see right here to change a serpentine belt on this truck is super easy and that is another thing with a 2010 i did make a video on how to change that serp belt and it was not an easy process getting this one off probably take you five minutes max also here you'll notice we do have just one big fan doesn't have dual fans or anything like that but we do have a fair amount of room in between and you do have a lot of room in behind this bumper as well if you wanted to mount an accessory or something like that. You definitely have the real estate to do it. Now moving over to the transmission, it looks like we have a composite or a plastic pan on it with some ribs for cooling, all that kind of stuff. Everything looks fairly accessible if you're ready to pull that off. I mean, you just have your exhaust kind of crossing over it, but there's a fair amount of room in between there if you did have to service that. Our drain plug is right here. I'm not a real big fan of having this sway bar right in front of it, I think. It might cause an issue when you try to drain that. It might actually want to spray everywhere, which is not going to be too much fun. But either way, you kind of just got to deal with what the engineers put in. So now a little look at our exhaust system. We do have our crossover pipe goes into this pipe here. If you want to put on a cat back, I believe you just have to remove these two bolts over here. And then we have our muffler, which is rather large, but this truck is fairly quiet. And then it goes over to our dual pipes over here above the differential. Over here we have our four link. This is actually a fairly substantial four link bar. These are solid steel. And then we've got our spring over here. And if I wanted to put some sort of airbag system in here, I'm not entirely sure where they put it. I think they might put it inside the spring, but I'm gonna have to look into that if we end up doing some big trailer toes with this truck. And if we need that little bit of extra support in the back. So as for our frame, we have a fully boxed frame on this truck. It's just painted. It doesn't look like it adds too much for corrosion protection. I know on the GMs, they do have that gummy stuff that they put all over it that when you end up working on it, it gets all over your hands, but this is just a painted surface. So I might be doing some sort of protection on this. I might put some undercoating or something like that just to try to keep it from rusting. Cause if you get any kind of little chip or anything like that on this, especially out in Pennsylvania, rust starts very quickly. So on our fully boxed frame, we've got about seven inches this way. We've got about three inches this way, and it's probably about an eighth of an inch thick. You could tell just by knocking on it about how thick the material actually is. And I'm sure they've done a lot of testing on this frame, making sure that it was strong enough for all the jobs that it's made to handle. And just kind of noticed that it does seem a little bit on the thin side, especially in this section here. 
but as you can see over where they have components and cross members and things like that they do have this extra plate welded over tops so it's kind of thickening up certain areas of the frame where it's going to receive more stress and over here we have our transmission mount which is a newer design i haven't seen any that look exactly like this before usually they are a lot smaller this one seems like it's quite substantial and over here, I notice on our drive shaft, we do have a Spicer drive shaft, which is a very high quality product. It goes to our aluminum drive shaft and goes down to our rear differential, which is a bolt on flange style, which is really nice. These are a whole lot easier to get out than those tiny little bolts that they used to use on the old second gens. And sometimes those ended up breaking and then you'd spend a whole lot of time drilling it out, trying to get a new bolt to go in there. So this is a very nice serviceable configuration. And over here, we do have a drain for our diff, which is nice because you don't wanna end up having to pull the cover every time you wanna change your differential fluid. So you just pull out that little plug right there and you're good to go. So a little look at the rear of our differential. I can see that there is a little bit of rust starting in here already. Pennsylvania is already taking a toll on my truck with 2000 miles on it even more so over here. So I'm gonna be going into here with some rust inhibitor and then I'm gonna hit that with probably some sort of undercoating or maybe bed liner or something like that just something to cover this all up so we don't end up having a whole pile of rust under our truck and it can last us a very long time and over here for our spare tire we do have a full size spare but it is just a temporary use only this is just kind of your mini spare it's not a tire that you'd actually see on the vehicle itself it's a 245 70 18 and you can see it doesn't have a whole lot of tread on or anything like that. This is basically just a tire to get you home if you do have a flat, but it is there. And I mean, if you had to use it, you could definitely get where you need to go with that. One thing I did notice about the exhaust, you can see how big the pipe is that comes out of the muffler. Then it goes up to this little Y and you can see how small these pipes are that go to the rear. I mean, compared to the tip, you can see the tip is large but the pipe is actually pretty small. So we might have to look into getting a catback exhaust system for this truck because I'd really like to open it up a little bit. Basically, if I come home and nobody knew that I came home because the truck was so quiet, it's definitely too quiet. So I think we're gonna have to remedy that very soon. Well, there you have it, everybody. That is the underside view of the 2019 Ram. And as I'd spoke about before, this truck is a rock chip magnet. I mean, I drive this thing down the road and it's basically, there's no rocks or anything on the road from what it seems like. And every car that is in front of me seems to make at least one or two rock chips on this truck. It's absolutely insane. But we did fix some of these last night while it was on the lift. So I'm gonna show you a before and after and a little technique that I use to do the rock chip repairs on this truck. So let's get it lowered down to a reasonable level and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean. And in case you guys didn't notice, I did do a little bit of a mod on the lift. I put my old Hurst shifter from the 72 Dart, seeing how I did put a chrome one on that car. I put that on the lift and it makes for an awesome release handle. All right, so on the 2019 Ram Laramie Sport, we have the painted bumpers, which look absolutely amazing. You get this truck out in the sunlight, the metallic just picks up that sun, and it looks absolutely amazing. But when having a black painted bumper, and you have any kind of sinters on the road or anything like that, anything that can get kicked up by other cars, you end up with little stuff like this and little things like that. And you have these little tiny rock chips. And on a black truck, they stick out like crazy. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I learned on how to fill these so you can't really see them without putting too much paint on. And I know there's gonna be people in the comments, yes, just get your truck expelled. You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. Expel, I had it quoted for the Camaro and I think the front bumper alone was about $1,600, which is absolutely insane. I could buy a whole new bumper for that pretty well. And I also have friends who have Expel on their cars and it isn't 100%. Sometimes it's bubble and it doesn't look good. And sometimes rocks go right through that anyways. So I mean, you're never gonna be 100% safe on avoiding any kind of damage to your vehicle, but when it does happen, I'm just gonna show you guys what I do to fill up little chips kind of like this one. So the first thing you're gonna need is some of your OEM touch-up paint. This is the Brilliant Black Metallic for this Ram. Pick this up at the dealership. And one of these right here. These come in a pack and I got them from Amazon. I will have a link in the description. It is a very, very small applicator. I don't know if you can tell how small that is, but it just takes a tiny little bit of paint from your touch up paint bottle. And then basically what you do is you just get into where the rock chip is 
and just apply a very, very small amount. And you can do this a couple of times. You can let that dry and you can do it again and build it up, but you just don't wanna have a big glob of touch-up paint. Like if you're gonna use the brush that comes with the touch-up paint, you're gonna have a big mess of paint that doesn't need to be there. This little applicator allows you to just put a very, very small amount in there and basically take care of it so you can't even see it. So now you can see we do have our chip right there. I'm gonna put the camera over here so I can use some precision in doing this. It is rather easy to do, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our paint brush out of our touch-up paint. Try not to spill our touch-up paint. I'm gonna take the applicator, basically just put a tiny little bit of this paint on there. And then I'm gonna put the brush back into the touch-up paint bottle so we don't spill that everywhere. And these do dry rather quickly, so you kinda gotta do this right away. And basically what you wanna do is get into your rock chip just like that. And while I still have some wet paint on here, I'm going to do this one as well. Basically all I'm doing is just lightly touching it. The paint is going into the chip and filling it up. And once you're done with this, you can only pretty much use these once, so toss it away. It does come in a pack, so you do have quite a few of them. And honestly, if you were going to be using this to do your touch-up paint, I mean, the touch-up paint will probably dry out before you'll end up using the entire bottle. It uses so little paint, but it also doesn't make a whole big mess, like I said before. So now, as you can see, we go along the bumper, and it's really hard to pick out any rock chips anymore. I mean, this bumper had about 10 or so of them on there. So this little technique works pretty good. By no means am I a bodyman. I just kind of picked this up because I did have some rock chips on my vehicles, and I just wanted a good, quick, and easy way to be able to touch them up, and this seemed to work really, really well. So I hope my little rock chip repair technique helped you guys out. Like I said, I will have the little applicators in the description. Also on this truck, we need to do some tire shine because this thing just isn't looking right. The tires are all dull and everything like that and the rest of the truck is nice and clean. But there is a flip side of that because a lot of times when you put tire shine on a vehicle, you end up putting it on the tires, you go for a drive, and then when you get where you're going, you have tire shine all over the vehicle. I've had this happen at dealerships, I've had this happen at detail places, and they basically put on a inferior tire shine, in my opinion, and it ends up just kind of spraying everywhere. So I do have a solution for that, and this is the tire shine that I use. This is actually a product made by Chemical Guys. I liked it so much that I did buy the big jug of it, and as you can see, I've only used about a quarter of this jug, and I've had this for probably about four or five years. I also bought their little sponge applicator here. You just kind of put some of this on the sponge and you just run it around your tire. And this stuff actually dries to the touch. So when you drive down the road, this stuff isn't slinging all over your vehicle and it works absolutely amazing and turns a truck that looks like this into one that looks like this. So now, as you can see, the tire is looking so much better with the tire shine on. This is actually a gel, so it's not like a spray or anything like that. You just kind of wipe it on, give it a few minutes to dry, and you're good to go without getting all that stuff sprayed all over your vehicle that you just spent a bunch of time cleaning. So now at this point in the video, it's kind of decision-making time. Do I keep going and put the rolling lock on the Ram today? or do I make that its own video? And I think what I'm gonna do is make that its own video just so you guys kind of get the whole idea on how to put that thing together, how it goes on the truck, and all the steps you need to take to get it installed properly and everything like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you guys are enjoying the content, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything that's happening over here at Hammerdown Motorsports Garage. We have so much coming. Over here we do have the 2017 supercharged Camaro SS. We will be taking off the cover very soon and getting out there and having some fun in the world with this car. We are going to power tour with this car. It's gonna be awesome. If you guys are going to power tour and you see me around at any of the events, definitely don't be shy. Come over, say hello, come grab a sticker, anything like that. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Outside, if you guys saw in the very beginning of the video, we do have the second gen Dodge which is gonna be going on this lift. It is a V10 2500 four wheel drive. We got some big tires for it and a big lift that's gonna be going on very, very soon. So we're gonna be getting that done as soon as we got some of these smaller projects out of the way, because that is probably gonna tie up our lift for a little, little while. So that's a little bit of what we got going on over here and I can't wait to see you guys on the next video. So as always, keep that hammer down.